White Sands Missile Range is a huge outdoor laboratory. Run by the U.S. Army, it's also used by the Air Force, the Navy, NASA, other government agencies, and some of our foreign allies. Since 1945, more than 45,000 rockets and missiles have been launched from here. In addition to that testing mission, White Sands Missile Range has a fascinating and rich history. Just a few centuries ago, Spanish conquistadors roamed this area searching for the fabled seven cities of gold. In the summer of 1945, the world was ushered into the atomic age with the testing of the first atomic bomb at Trinity Site on the north end of White Sands. In the late 19th century, Sheriff Pat Garrett enforced the laws in this area. And in 1946, America was thrust into the space age with the launch of large rockets from local launch complexes. Occupying over 3,200 square miles in southern New Mexico, White Sands Missile Range is a place of stark contrasts. Jagged mountains reach up 9,000 feet above sea level. Blistering dry basins disappear in the distance without a tree in sight. Pure white gypsum sand dunes drift to the east under the relentless push of the westerly winds. Deep canyons in the mountain ranges offer some respite with shade and an occasional trickle of water. Larger than some states that are home to millions of people, White Sands is essentially uninhabited, a necessity for the testing and training that goes on today. But it wasn't always that way. For centuries, Native Americans, hunter-gatherers, used this area as their local grocery store, taking advantage of seasonal changes in flora and fauna. Today they're known as the Mogollon culture, and what they left behind only hints at what they were like. They were replaced by the Apache, a proud and independent people who were willing to challenge the Europeans when they invaded. In Embryo Canyon, part of the San Andres Mountains, there is a major battle site where Warm Springs Apache, under Chief Victorio, fought U.S. Cavalry Buffalo Soldiers in April of 1880. Recent investigations of the site have uncovered hundreds of artifacts and allowed historians to draw new conclusions about what happened there. European settlement in this area was dominated by ranching and mining. Miners did find some gold and silver, but mostly it was a chase for less valuable minerals like talc, copper, lead, and tungsten. Ranchers ran cattle on the dry grasslands, and in the mountains, Angora goats were raised for their wool. Dozens of ranch families and a few miners gave up their land during World War II to form a bombing range headquartered near Alamogordo, currently the home of Holloman Air Force Base. At the end of the war, White Sands was established using the bombing range lands. The mission was to investigate the new rocket technology emerging from Hitler's war machine. Some saw its application as a weapon, while others, like rocket pioneer Robert Goddard in nearby Roswell, New Mexico, saw the possibility of sending man-made objects to the moon and beyond. White Sands literally started with a bang, a big one. On July 16, 1945, just a week after the missile range was established, the world's first atomic bomb was exploded at a place called Trinity Site a remote spot on the north end of the old bombing range. In my opinion, Trinity site is probably one of the most historic spots in, in, in the, on the earth. One time when I was up at uh, Trinity site for our open house, I, I made the statement that I thought that uh, with the possible exception of uh, Bethlehem, that uh, Trinity site was probably the most historic spot in the world. You know, because it was here on that pre-dawn hours on a July morning in 1945 that the world's first nuclear device was exploded. And in less time than it takes you to blink your eye, the, the course of mankind and human events was changed forever. That ushered in the, the nuclear age. So I think it's very important and for better or worse, it's going to impact mankind for all time to come. The site is so obviously important the National Park Service asked to make Trinity Site a national monument in 1946. Instead, it remains part of the White Sands test ranges, 
but as a national historic landmark that is open to the public twice a year. Almost 80 miles from Trinity, another groundbreaking site was established just east of the Missile Range's main post. It is the country's first rocket launch complex and is known today as Launch Complex 33. I'm Don Thomas, former NASA astronaut, and during my career with NASA, I had the great opportunity to fly on four different space shuttle missions, three times on Space Shuttle Columbia and once on Space Shuttle Discovery. When many people think of the early years of the space program, they think of Cape Canaveral and the Kennedy Space Center. But the real birthplace of space flight in the United States is at the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. Beginning in 1946, we set about launching captured V-2 rockets that we obtained from the Germans at the end of World War II. Using these captured rockets, we were able to learn quite a bit about assembly, testing, and launching of the rockets. We also used them for many valuable scientific experiments. Launching them to the fringes of space, we were able, for the first time, to measure the atmosphere, its pressure, its composition, and the changes as we increased altitude. We also sent a number of biological specimens into space on these rockets very early on in the space program to see if living systems can survive the rigors of space. Maybe the most important V-2 flight involved using a monkey as a passenger. On looking at the data afterwards, scientists discovered that vital respiration and heart rates during the most stressful parts of the flight were within normal parameters. It must have given him confidence as early as 1948 that a large monkey like a man would eventually be able to ride the rocket safely into space and on to other planets. In the 1960s, White Sands Missile Range played a vital role in the development of the Apollo spacecraft used to send our astronauts to the moon. All the testing on the launch escape system and much of it on the parachute recovery system was done at White Sands which made the spacecraft safer and helped protect our astronauts during these hazardous journeys. After some early design testing of space shuttle models at White Sands, on March 30, 1982, the Space Shuttle Columbia, on just its third mission, landed on the missile range's backup runways. In addition to the testing of the shuttle, much of the practical experience on approaches and landings of the space shuttle is done at White Sands. Before any astronaut pilots the real space shuttle on a mission, they practiced the approach and landing hundreds and hundreds of times at the White Sands Space Harbor. In looking to the future, NASA plans to continue its spacecraft development testing at the White Sands Missile Range with the new Orion spacecraft. First launch of the Orion is tentatively scheduled for 2015, and first flights to the moon may begin as early as 2020. This Orion spacecraft is very similar to the Apollo spacecraft and is a key component to our future missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. The testing to be done at White Sands will be very similar to Apollo, with testing of the launch escape system for the Orion spacecraft. From its initial rocket launches back in 1946 that sent the first V-2 rockets into space from the United States, to the development of the Orion spacecraft, the White Sands Missile Range continues to play a vital role in the exploration of space that will send our future astronauts to the Moon, to Mars and beyond. The main thrust of the Missile Range's existence has been the testing of Army, Navy, and Air Force tactical missiles and other weapon systems. Most of these systems have never been used in anger, but because of the work done here, the nation has always been assured that its soldiers, sailors, and airmen have the very best equipment available. Some of the prominent systems tested include Nike Ajax, the world's first air defense missile. Nike Zeus, the world's first missile defense missile. Pershing, the ground-to-ground -ground missile deployed in Europe to keep Soviet forces at bay during the Cold War. Navy Talos, a shipboard missile that could hit aircraft, other ships, or ground targets. Air Force Matador, about the size of a small jet fighter, this became the first cruise missile. Theater High Altitude Area Defense, a missile capable of utterly destroying an incoming missile carrying a nuclear warhead before it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Since White Sands is a test facility for dangerous systems that have not been proven yet, the military and civilian workforce has led the way nationally in developing safe procedures and the necessary equipment to capture all details of the test. 
This means that even in the event of a major failure, there will be data available to analyze and see what went wrong. The next step for developers is to fix the problem and try it again. Clyde Tombaugh, the astronomer who discovered the planet Pluto in 1930, used his skills during the first decade of White Sands to build and direct the photographic coverage of missile tests at the range. His hand-built Bright Eyes tracking system was the first American attempt that successfully married motion picture cameras with powerful telescopes to photograph missiles in flight from miles away. While conducting the thousands of tests since 1945, the missile range has not forgotten about the desert environment underfoot. Within the boundaries of the missile range are the San Andres National Wildlife Refuge, which was established to protect desert bighorn sheep habitat, and White Sands National Monument, which protects the world's largest surface deposit of pure white gypsum sands. The missile range has been lauded by various state and federal agencies and environmental professionals for its work in preserving and protecting the natural and cultural landscape that makes up White Sands. The White Sands Missile Range Museum is part of that effort. It has evolved from a small visitor center in the 1980s to a full-fledged Army Museum. In broad terms, the museum is focused on two different histories. One is the obvious story of the missile range and its storied past when the world watched the latest technologies being tested here. This story differs a bit from other Army museums because this facility also curates Air Force and Navy activities on White Sands. The other story, not so typical for an Army museum, is what happened on this huge piece of New Mexico before there was a White Sands Missile Range. The area is rich with the accounts of Native Americans, miners, ranchers, and other settlers to this harsh land. In addition to preserving and interpreting this multifaceted history, the museum and its staff are working to educate young people, our country's future. Youngsters who visit the White Sands Museum learn about science and technology. They learn about the politics and costs of war. They learn about people who lived here and embraced the hardships of the desert with very little technology of their own. Future plans for the museum with the support of the White Sands Historical Foundation call for the improvement of the current facilities. More room is needed for displays and exhibits. A theater and education center are needed to better accommodate the numerous school groups that visit. And a new archive is needed to provide modern storage for the large collection of documents and artifacts currently housed in a substandard warehouse. In the end, White Sands Missile Range is a unique military asset. Pioneers from all walks of life, from the cowboy to the electrical engineer, have walked this desert land and shaped its look and feel. The Range's museum is dedicated to telling their stories for all to experience and enjoy.